Hello, this is Mega Product Manager Martin Brennan from Boris FX. In this video, I will cover new features and improvements in Mocha Pro 2020.5. This release focuses heavily on core functionality and support over flashy new features, but we're sure both seasoned users and newcomers will appreciate the update. So let's get into it. First up, we have made some great improvements in planar tracking, specifically the handling of surface and shape data when tracking deep, wide-ranging perspective shots. In earlier versions of Mocha, it was possible to lose your surface or mat when the original tracking plane went too far past the camera. Now, Mocha will adapt the long distortion and is much more flexible in a wide range of scenarios. One of Mocha's powerful features is rendering out rotor mats with natural motion blur, however in the past the performance was not incredibly fast. You can turn on motion blur in the edge properties panel and adjust the amount of blur, the phase and the quality settings to help it fit the motion of your shot. In Mocha 2020.5 we are happy to say that the rendering of mats with motion blur has been sped up immensely, showing as much as four times the speed as previous versions. For example, in this shot, the motion blurred mat of the coat used to take over a minute to render, and now it takes under 20 seconds, with no loss in quality. Keep in mind, of course, that as always, render speeds will vary according to your hardware and system setup. We've also added more roto support for Autodesk Flame Artists in the form of the popular GMAS Tracer node format, and new tracking data support via the Flame Axis nodes. You can access the new shape and tracking exports in Flame via the Mocha Pro OFX plugin, or export data to Flame separately in the Mocha Pro standalone application. Here inside Flame, we've set up a Mocha Pro OFX node and tracked and keyframed a dress in the Mocha GUI. Now we can export it as GMAS Tracer data to disk. You can then import the data into a new GMAS Tracer node inside Flame and composite the output. In this case, we tweak the colour of the dress, and the new Roto data holds out the result. The tracer format splits apart into animated G-masks and separated tracking data on the axis node, making it much easier to tweak your masks after you've imported them. The separate axis export converts Mocha's planar tracking data to 3D axis data. This also comes into flame as a G-mask tracer node, ready for attaching. We've added a number of improvements to the area brush. For starters, you can now adjust the brush size by holding down the command or control key and dragging the mouse for quick shape creation. Additionally, the area brush now has an option to fill missed gaps in the painted area so you don't have to paint over every little part. You can adjust the gap size in the fill gaps field to close even the largest gaps. For general roto, the magnetic edge snapping has been improved. Drag snapping has been updated to snap multiple points at a time, rather than the first point you selected. For customers using Media Composer in broadcast post-production, interlacing files are still a necessary delivery format. We've updated the support in the Mocha Pro AVX plugin so that interlaced frames are correctly interpreted as upper or lower, and can be read and tracked per field. Rendering output from modules like Insert, Stabilize and Remove is then blended correctly back to the timeline. OCIO colour management was introduced in Mocha 2020, and Mocha 2020.5 expands that support by providing much deeper control over your colour configuration. You can adjust your project settings for specific configurations of bit depth and clip type, or save them as defaults by going to the colour tab inside preferences. For example here, the working colour space inside Nuke is seen linear, but the view is Rec 709. Inside the Mocha Pro plugin, we can adopt the linear colour transform and then display the footage as Rec. 709 as well to match Nuke for easier viewing. You can also load an existing configuration, such as the Nuke default config or the Aces config, to match your workflow exactly. Renders and clean plates are also stored in proper colour format for better editing and support. For example, here we can render and create a remove clean plate and import it into Nuke and the colour will remain matched in the view. Next up, we've overhauled media file reading support in Mocha Pro Standalone, so you no longer have to rely on QuickTime to import clips from disk. Now the standalone application can import more movie file types and codecs that used to have to be converted. The new support includes many standard container formats and codecs, and this also means for the first time we can support reading clip formats on Linux. 
If you're running Mocha Pro standalone, you can find this new option under the Clip tab in Preferences. But if you're running as a plugin version of Mocha, the host media engine is used by default, so you don't have to worry. Additionally, R3D support has also been updated to 7.2, meaning you can bring in data for more recent RED hardware. Beyond these new features and updates, we've added a few more improvements based on customer feedback. If you've ever been frustrated seeing a blank view when you have an unrendered frame, you now have the option to display the original source frame instead, to keep things coherent. Based on some requests, we've also improved the visibility of the playhead when playing and tracking footage, so it's easier to see where you're up to in the shot. Mocha Pro 2020.5 now also fully supports macOS Catalina, and as always we've tweaked a whole bunch of other areas and squashed many annoying bugs. You can view more detailed videos of the main updates, check out the release notes for a full feature list, or if you have any questions, pop over to the forums at borisfx.com.